Hello and welcome to the internet. Welcome to the Bell of Lost Souls RPG Corner. I'm JR, your friendly neighborhood Fungin Master. Hey, I'm Megan, and I was kind of dancing off screen right until the moment Ooh. that this turned on. We are the RPG team here at Bulls, and uh, today we're here to talk about what's going on in the world of role-playing games right now. Uh, we are kind of just hitting that uh, uh, cresting into spooky season slump where there's a lot that's about to happen, but there's not a lot that's currently happening. Um, with D&D Celebration having wrapped up, uh, a lot of games getting ready for uh, November launch, uh, especially ones that were due to release in like uh, August or September. Um, we are kind of seeing seeing more things kind of holding on and coming to fruition. Uh, one of the big uh, delays that was supposed to be hitting tomorrow, um, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, the, the new D&D video game coming to a PC and also Stadia near you has been pushed back about a week. Uh, it won't be releasing till October 6th now, though it, they do still hope to uh, uh, be on track with it. Um, I, I It's what I've been looking forward to. I don't know if you played either the old Baldur's Gate games, Megan, or uh, have been following the new one at all, but yeah, this one looks rad. I've been following the heck out of it. It looks really, really cool. Um, yeah. I only played a little bit of the older ones, but uh, video games never really been my forte. So it, I know it's one of those things that I'm going to play for a little while, and then I'm going to realize that I'm bad at doing this. <laughs> yep. Uh, so it, I might watch other people play. That's usually kind of my jam. Uh, it's. I mean, I'm. I'm excited. I. I hope to be one of the people you might watch play because I'm. Uh, planning on jumping into early access and kind of giving folks a look around at it so you can watch me fail uh, and follow my misadventures in Baldur's Gate 3 once that comes up because uh, I played Divinity Original Sin both 1 and 2 and I was not good at either of them. <laughs> you, just, you just die a lot if you're if you're like, oh, I have to utilize all these, these systems. I mm. die a lot is how I play most video games yeah. all the time. I'm just, just continuously dying and coming back and trying again. So eh, that's fine. That'll be just like I'm playing. Uh, speaking of um, uh, video games that have been delayed, another d d game, the other 5th edition game, which is coming out at around the same time, uh, Solasta Crown of the Magister. This is a... a like if, if Baldur's Gate 3 is like the big... like triple-A release, and people are not sure whether or not you call it a triple-A release. This is like the sort of indie follow-up. This is a uh, much more like grid-based tabletop adaptation. So it's like someone took the rules of the fifth edition SRD and, and did it. So they don't have mind flayers or any of like Watsi's intellectual properties, but they did work with Wizards of the Coast to get the license for like their, the, their like uh, open gaming, you know, SRD publicly available rules, uh, and they've also been developing it alongside it. It's much more of a dungeon crawler than like a, a you know character RPG, but they've been putting just a ton of effort into it. If you want that dungeon crawl combat, you should check them out. But you're also going to have to wait because they're also delayed until next week. Or that's that's the story of 2020. You know, it's 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 a year that's come for everyone. And For is real. still here and will continue to still be here well into 2021 by this point, I'm convinced. I mean, in the in other tabletop news, we're just now getting the, the codexes for Space Marines and Necrons, and we've known about them and seen pictures of them and had looks at the data sheets from inside of them since, like, June. Mm hmm I mean, it's kind of to be expected that everything... I don't want to say went on hiatus for a minute, but, like, yeah. just got paused it's been kind of yes. a messy, messy year where it's been really hard to make things if this were like a if this were a role-playing game they they'd they'd call it like the lost year or something like that yeah um we've uh, other other things that have been delayed pa uh, pathfinder several pathfinder adventures won't be coming out until next month uh cyberpunk red won't be coming out until november maybe uh hopefully fingers crossed everything looks really good there yes. um uh, Cyberpunk 2077, I think, is also delayed. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the other big RPG video game that we're looking forward to, but that has has kind of sailed further and further back into 2020, yeah. which, you know, the, the fewer things that 2020 can get its hands on, the better, if you ask me. I just like one, <clears throat> one nice thing that'd be cool. 
if I could just um, get one nice thing this year. Uh, I, I read a fun um, article about the new cyberpunk video game, which I thought was was very funny, even though I don't think it was supposed to be, where they commented that it was going to be shorter than Witcher 3. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's that's a low bar. <laughs> uh, I got I got one nice thing for you. Okay. Um, the Untitled Goose Game has co-op multiplayer now. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so... You can you, you can get so I think it's even couch co-op. You can just like you and a friend can uh can just play the Untitled Goose game together, uh, and you're both you horrible geese. For no reason. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> like that's honestly honestly one of the best. Um, <clears throat> but back to role playing games. Uh, a few things though have come out. So even though it's it's been kind of a a like a weird slump of a week. Um, we do have uh, some cool previews of the upcoming D&D book, uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, even though D&D Celebration is over, um, it is the gift that continues to give. Uh, we got to see an example of magical tattoos. Um, these are new magic items that are kind of... Uh, they they function like most magical items, except they don't like you don't wear them on your hand or on your head. You get them tattooed on your skin. Uh, and if you've been squeamish about needles or have ever rebelled against the idea of getting a tattoo because you're like, I don't like pain. Um, these you get the easy way, but you just like take a needle and touch it to where you want the tattoo to be. And you say the magic word and then you have a tattoo. I would have so many if that were the case. Right. I mean, you already have a few, so. Yeah, but I need to save up like money and and spoons to get these. Right, like, I have to show up and be like, "All right, I'm going to be in pain for eight hours, and that's going to be okay." Yep. <laughs> but if I didn't have to do that, Ugh, just covered. Um, presumably, each of these magic tattoos comes with its own vat of Aquaphor. <laughs> um, they uh, we got we got to look at two of them. Uh, we know that there are going to be at least I think like ten. Um, we've seen two so far: the coiled grasp tattoo and the masquerade tattoo. The masquerade tattoo is the the tattoo that everyone wishes they had. It's it can be anything you want. You can just like take an action and you can make it appear like anything. It can move around on your skin. So you could have a, a an I love mom tattoo over here while you're robbing the, the Royal treasury. And then when the guards come to investigate you, you can have the uh, anchor tattoo here and like a really cool face tattoo of someone else's face on your face. Um, <clears throat> it also lets you ca cast a sky self once a day. So that's, that's fun. Um, and then the Coiled Grasp Tattoo lets you uh, uh, use inky tendrils, which is a disturbing phrase, to restrain your targets in place when you attack them. Uh, this is just kind of a sample of what we can expect out of these new magic items. They're kind of going in a, a more, like, character-focused thing rather than, like, strictly combat uh, effectiveness, which I think is mm -hmm. pretty cool. It also just seems like kind of a weird, fun direction to go in with these. Like, you could make any magical item do these things, but the fact that they made them tattoos just makes it very fun flavor text, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's good for, for personalizing your characters, if if nothing else, and I really enjoy that. Because um, mm -hmm. I just like spending way too much time on my characters and exactly what they look like. <laughs> I feel like this has been um, made specifically for me. Uh, it, I think that's kind of an interesting direction that they're going in general. Like it feels like yeah. from like 2018 on uh, a lot of stuff we're seeing is stuff that is like just fun to play, but it's also there to kind of recreate those like actual play podcast slash live stream moments, you know, like they're, they're trying to capture the fun that people are doing in their homebrew games. Uh, Cause everyone does stupid stuff at home. For sure. uh, and they're trying to bring it more into the official game to be like, yeah, no, we we want you to do this. We want you to do silly things because they're fun. Keep playing our game. Yeah, exactly. Um, other cool things happening right now. There's a few Kickstarter that have made some pretty big splashes. Uh, one is called Hecna, which is a magic carnival themed uh, uh, 
role-playing game campaign. Uh, it, this is like a pretty uh, extensive like campaign setting. Um, of of its twenty thousand dollar goal, it's raised almost four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So uh, it's like you you can tell already that this is one of those like bonkers kickstarters that has just like taken off and uh, gone into all sorts of wild directions, which means uh, you can get for a, a an initial investment, you can get all kinds of cool things like the book, um, but you also get a ton of uh, miniatures. Uh, there's like new adventures, there's props. Uh, there, you can get your very own deck of Hecna playing cards. Uh, you can get your own deck of 5 E reference cards, of course, any Kickstarter that has more than like a couple hundred thousand is all but guaranteed to have plastic minis. Um, and so there are minis. Uh, just a fair warning, if you are uh, afraid of clowns, this is a carnival horror game uh, and there are evil clowns and like you get a look at what the clown's red nose actually is in this game and i wish i hadn't seen it and i never want to see it again um you do get some cool like circus popcorn colored themed dice uh that come in their own little popcorn bag which is pretty cool um this has just like a lot of people working on it um they got uh erica ishi if you know who she is to um like to, she's been like one of the a voice actors in a ton of video games uh she does the over the voiceover acting announcing stuff for this uh kickstarter video which is definitely worth checking out um i don't know it's it's great it's ca crazy it like kicked off beyond i think people's wildest expectations so uh, you should check that out um if you prefer your dark D, D adventures to be less uh circus themed you should also check out a game called the red oh there it is there it is i passed that a second ago and i was like oh unsubscribe unsubscribe <laughs> um, looks super cool though and i really i really like how even though larger games have been by and large getting push back a little bit and um, have have been having their timelines just paused here and there. I like how a lot of yeah. the smaller indie games and Kickstarters are doing really, really great. Cause like, yeah, that, that if indie, small, uh, that indie $400,000, um, which I mean is great. Uh, we should also talk about the red opera, which is a warlock themed Kickstarter campaign. But one second, I see my dogs getting into something. I'm going to go look up the Red Opera right now. All right. I'm back. I'm back. The Red Opera is... Huh? That gave me enough time, to pull, huh? enough time to pull it up. The Red Opera, it's uh, uh, subtitled The Last Days of the Warlock, is uh, like a dark fantasy game in the, the vein of like... Dark Souls or uh, Darkest Dungeon or something like that. It is uh, dripping with atmosphere, uh, dark. and that atmosphere is grim, dark, gloomy, and kind of like that that you know that that delicious melancholy. Oh, things are going to kill us all kind of attitude. Um, mm -hmm. It has. Uh, it is another take on a fifth edition campaign. Uh, this is. Um, by being done by Apotheosis Studios, who have done a couple of other things before. Uh, they they put out um, Shadow of the Moon, uh, which is a, a roguelike action-adventure RPG that some folks might have played. Uh, and I think, I think that's the big one folks would know them from. Um, but they... Uh, are pulling out all of the stops to bring this like epic sprawling uh, campaign. So this isn't just like a campaign setting. This is a full module. You get the setting, you get adventures that you can kind of play through. Um, people are talking uh, a lot about the, the, the story of it. Um, I think you're going to be able to see it streamed, even if you're not 
interested in backing or playing it. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. It like takes place in this, like, I don't know, this vaguely, not exactly like dark magic punk city, but there's like a lot of, there's warlocks, there's gods, um, there's, there's like, death and metal but not necessarily death metal um but they're so close you you get a sprawling campaign map to explore mm -hmm. uh you get a ton of cool uh uh areas in each section of this book um if you want like a big sprawling campaign that goes into like the the high levels uh this is one for you which is something that a lot of fifth edition content doesn't really deliver on uh, most stuff kind of stops around the level 11 range, but this goes beyond. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it's already super funded, so uh, if, if you've only got two days left to get in on it if you want to back it, uh, but you should definitely check it out. Um, yeah, and it looks like the stuff you can get if you back it is bonkers. Um, yeah, oh yeah. Like just, just the physical books they put out look beautiful. Right. Um, and there's figures and coins. There's all sorts of really neat stuff. Is that a no, giant dice roller? I, I, that's like another real interesting trend, right? Like as more and more like campaigns and modules and things are, are kickstarted and successfully so, I might add, um, we are starting to see a lot more like accessories, mm -hmm. which is a trend that started with um, uh, Call of Cthulhu, actually. So there was a, a campaign called The Masks of uh, Nyarlathotep, um, which is widely regarded as one of the best tabletop RPG campaigns of all time because it's like mm -hmm. this big atmospheric, like it's the iconic like Cthulhu experience. Um, it made a lot of use of things like handouts and maps and stuff like that that you would just like give to the um, give to the uh, uh, players as you mm -hmm. went through the game. And so you would find like a ton of cool, like it was immersive, right? It was a, a ton of yeah. cool, like opportunities to see what your characters are seeing. So like you find a letter, you get the letter. Um, we're seeing that more and more these days, like, uh, and not just through Kickstarters too, but like, um, I don't know if you know, Beetle and Grimm's, they're the like, mm -hmm. the the premier luxury D&D &D accessory maker, but they're all about mm -hmm. creating props and wearable things and uh, maps and stuff like that. And I, I love that. Um, I used to, a while ago, do a little bit of LARPing, and one of the things I really enjoyed was they'll just physically hand you things, and then you kind of have a souvenir from your weekend, but also it's just like a thing that helps you get into the game. Oh, yeah, like just, just playing pretend. So just I like always really enjoy you... when somebody like hands me something, and it, it's not something you can do very easily while we're all playing online. But when we're all when we're playing in person and the GM could just like hand you a letter, I think that's very very cool and it it's just very immersive. Yeah. When so when you're like playing a game, what are the things that you like to find? You know. Hmm. Like, is it better to get a letter than a map, or is it better to oh. have like a cool like? Oh, this is the the magic scarab you're actually seeing. I think it depends a lot on which character I'm playing. Mm. So some of my characters would way prefer to get some cool piece of information, especially if they like hoarding information away. But the character I'm playing right now, if you just handed them like a gun, they'd just be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... I don't know. I think it's going to be real interesting to see like as we get more... Um, like as, as gaming becomes more and more mainstream and more people get into it, I think kind of this expectation of like all the cool stuff that, that you see in live streams like Critical Role because they often will pull out a map or or Matt Mercer will hand someone a letter mm -hmm. and just be like, yep, here's the thing that you found. Uh, I, I think that's kind of becoming more and more commonplace. So I'm curious to see what gaming looks like in just a few years. I'm also really enjoying games like um, Dimension 20 and where they'll make oh, their yeah. giant sprawling sets that have clearly taken a, a bunch of professionals all week to make because right. they're they're bonkers and they're down to the detail. But it's it's such a cool experience and it really makes D D a watchable thing. Yeah. And it's not just a bunch of people sitting at a table like saying words at each other. It's like a neat thing you can you can watch. You can, you can like watch, right? And Dimension 20, that's where they 
Uh, is that one of the places that they host the uh, Not Another D and D podcast? Or am I wrong I think it's a lot about of the that? Same people. Ah, okay. Uh, Mad Pod and Dimension Twenty are a lot of a lot of college humor folks. Right. So I don't know if they're necessarily the same thing, but they do have so much crossover. And <laughs> I feel like I feel like the the players reference each other a lot. Yeah. The same players. Uh, they recently started a new show uh the pirates of leviathan mm -hmm. or or had a big like episode of it uh which features a ton of people you might recognize uh including matt mercer uh, uh b dave walters and uh, uh a few other folks so check them out dimension 20 they're good yeah, they're good all times of, all of them are so worth it i'm very behind so we just started tiny heist oh cool which is fantastic and wonderful and very very funny and when they make their sets, it's clearly a lot of things they found on eBay, like broken Tamagotchis. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, RIP busted Tamagotchis. <laughs> I think I have a uh, box of them somewhere. Somewhere out there uh, is a Neopets RPG just waiting to happen. And whoever does it and does it right is going to make so much nostalgia money. So many nostalgia dollars. Uh, maybe maybe, nostalgia maybe dollars. That's, what, that's what we'll kickstart. <laughs> I'll get involved in that. I'll get yeah. sued by Neopets. Right? We'll get we'll get sued by are, I mean, I'm sure they're still around, right? Aren't they one of those websites that you're like, how are they still going? One of the podcasts I listened to did a Neopets episode. And it might have been Neo Scum, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go, I'll have to go look it up and get back to you. But I know one of the podcasts I listened to just did a weird ne uh, <laughs> Neopets one-off episode, and it was very, very funny. Well, if Neopets is still around and will sue us, maybe it's Club Penguin instead. Anything to cash in on that that early aughts nostalgia money, um, or maybe like a codename Kids Next Door RPG. Ooh. Any or all of these, now talking. right? Um, these are all these are all words that mean a lot to me. <laughs> Well, uh, that is mostly all of the news that's happening. Uh, there are, of course, a few other things coming out uh, that we'll be talking about as the week unfolds. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for tuning in. Be sure and check back next Tuesday when we'll back, be back here with all the happenings in the RPG industry, uh, including uh, any new products, controversies, scams, cool ideas, awesome releases, uh, uh, fun trivial facts and uh, we'll probably talk about neopets so if you want to know like if they're still around and what podcast did a neopets episode be sure and join us next week uh be also sure and join us next monday for the war game show where we talk about all the things that are going on in the tabletop war gaming world uh probably more space marines and necrons for those of you who know what those are and also care um and check out Bell Blast Souls on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Bell Blast Souls for cool paint streams uh, and fun times. Uh, in the meantime, that's everything. I'm JR. I'm Megan. This has been the RPG Corner here at Bulls. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm.